All right, welcome back everyone. We're continuing with our slideshow from yesterday, World War II and the Holocaust. Grab yourself that sheet of paper. Again, make three columns. The first one is, what do you already know about the Holocaust? Take a moment and pause this video and write some things down. Column two will be thoughts and questions, or sorry, thoughts and comments, and column three will be questions. Please pause me now. Welcome back. Um, we are going to continue our slideshow, leaving off with slide 12 from yesterday. What does World War II have to do with the Holocaust? We had a lot of background, a lot of times, dates, places, people yesterday. Um, knowing all of that is not super essential, no, no need to memorize, but I just need to give you like a painting. I need to paint a picture of what life was like. So without one piece of the puzzle, it's very difficult for you and your age group of people to understand what happened in that time period without knowing all the pieces to the puzzle, okay? So now we're gonna talk about the Holocaust today. Just bear in mind, this is upsetting. This is heavy and emotional information, um, just as a warning, okay? So our first thing is uh, Adolf Hitler essentially brainwashed the people, as you heard yesterday, um, to believe that only certain people were good and those who were not should be exterminated. Um, we talked about that in the slides yesterday and you learned that he did not care for Jews, um, but there were other groups of people he did not care for either, but uh, the most population was the Jewish people. Um, when Hitler became leader, remember that from our timeline yesterday, the people of Germany were not doing well. They were poor. There was no jobs. Food was expensive. They were pretty much down and out, and they needed someone to help lead them to a better life. Hitler, just like mm, some politicians do, they stand up there and they promise a lot of things. And I guess these people were so desperate that they believed him. And they are to be faulted for not being careful and for not thinking clearly, but they were also uh, undergoing some kind of brainwash to uh, believe what Hitler believed. Um, but honestly, if they had a different guy out there telling them something different, they probably would have believed that person too. Um, when you're desperate and don't have any other choice, that's what happens. All right. So Hitler told them that the way, the way life was for them and the reason why they were poor and the reason why there were no jobs and the reason why they had no money or food and no homes was because of the Jews. And it was because of the Jews that they lost World War I. That's really not true, but that's what he told them. So the people of Germany and their soldiers, who were called the Nazis, started to do really horrible things to many, many people, namely the Jewish, though. So just like a World War II timeline, I'm going to give you a timeline of the Holocaust. Hitler declared what's called a genocide on the Jewish people. And genocide means a systematic and widespread extermination or attempted extermination of an entire national, racial, religious, or ethnic group. Basically, genocide means to get rid of a group of people that exist on earth, every last one of them. He was doing this, actually, we know now, even before World War II had begun. In 1933, March 22nd, which is before World War II, two because i don't know if you remember from yesterday but world war ii officially began in 1939 so for six years before that hitler was working on this plan he established his very first concentration camp in dasha germany april 1st 1933 still six years before the war first jewish shops were boycotted boycotted is if that were the least of the things that they did that would be great but Boycotted is simply you don't go there and you don't buy their goods. And eventually what happens is if you don't shop there, people don't shop there, they don't make any money. Um, that would have been 
a nice route to go to hurt them. Not that you should have hurt them anyway, but that would have been the least, uh, you know, crazy one. Um, undesirable people was who Hitler targeted. Um, I did say the Jewish people, but undesirable people also include anyone that's homeless, anyone that's an alcoholic, anyone that's unemployed. And those were the people that were gathered up first and sent to the concentration camp. September 15, 1935, Jewish rights were ordered to be taken away. So again, not the worst of the punishments, still not right, but not the worst. Um, rights meaning allowed to go out, allowed to go to these stores, allowed to be a free citizen. Um, not, not good, but not terrible at this point, okay? Jewish synagogues got destroyed. Those synagogues are like their churches, and that was very devastating to them to have their place of worship destroyed. Then they started issuing a Jewish passport, which was stamped with the red J. Um, just like in today's world, as an adult, you need to have your ID on you. You go out to drive, you need to have ID. You go to the store, you need ID. Um, passports were you know, ID that they carried around. And if anyone wanted to know if they were Jewish, they need just to look at someone's passport. Um, November 9th, 1939, beginning of the Jews being murdered, arrested and sent to concentration camps. Actually, that's out of order. Should be arrested, sent to concentration camps and murdered. Uh, November 15th, 1938, Jewish children being expelled from school. November 23rd, 1939, Jews still living in Germany were forced to sew a yellow star on their clothing so they could be easily identified. So here's just a quick glimpse of some of the situations that the Jews faced. Um, I implore you now to look at the top picture. Those two little fellows there are Jewish and they must wear the Jewish star upon their clothing so that when they go out with their family, everyone knows that they are Jewish. Um, I cannot stress this enough how terrible a thing this was in history. And the reason why we learn about terrible things is not to upset you and it is not to make you feel sad or scared or sorry but it is to help every generation that comes learn and learn what to do and learn what not to do. From this, the biggest lesson is essentially about bullying and it's essentially about picking on a certain group of people and not just picking on them with texts and emails and you know, in school. It's, this was a serious bully. Um, genocide is not, you know, not to be taken lightly. So if you look at those two little faces and you ask yourself, what did they do wrong? They're Jewish. Why do they deserve this? Right? And then in the bottom, we have a group of women. Um, you'll notice their clothing is all the same. These are striped pajama-like outfits to be worn. Um, and unfortunately, these women are in a concentration camp. And I can tell that because of the barbed wire and because of their faces, of the way they look scared and tired and nervous and upset, and also because of the pajama outfit they're wearing. All right, continuing on the timeline, early 1940s, any Jews in countries that Germany controlled, remember they controlled a lot during the war, are ordered to be sent to concentration camps. May 20th, 1940, a new concentration camp is opened named Auschwitz. November 15th, 1940, Warsaw Ghetto is sealed off, approximately 400 Jews inside. We're going to talk more about a ghetto with some picture books I read to you online. A ghetto is a place where, think of Main Street down in Lincoln Park. Think about if the, the whole Main Street and the buildings inside Main Street Imagine four walls were constructed around Main Street. And it's not that long, as you know. And every Jewish person, to the total number of 400,000 people, were inside this space. Um, yes, they have access to a few shelters, 
but I don't think that the Nazis are going to be delivering food. I don't think that the Nazis are going to be caring if someone in there is sick. Um, so a ghetto is exactly what you may think of a ghetto today, but the word actually comes from this time period when people were sealed up in close quarters and essentially they were wasting away in there. December 8th, 1940, the first death camp is opened. January 1942, the mass gassing of Jews at Auschwitz. Um, hmm. The best way to explain this is um, Jews were gathered up to, to be told that they were going to be taking a shower and they were escorted into a locker room type of situation. Um, they were told to undress and then head into the shower type area. Um, instead of receiving a shower, they were um, pumping a toxic and deadly gas in through the vents and the German Nazis were able to kill mass amount of people at one time. Again, um, this is not something to upset you. I mean, it is upsetting, but it's, it's the facts of history. So uh, I implore you to keep going here so we can learn more about what happened. Uh, summer of 1942, Jews from all over Europe were starting to get sent to the death camps. Um, there are all kinds of camps. We'll talk about those in a minute. January 1943, gypsies are sent to concentration camps. April 19th through May 16th, 1943, some Jewish people in the Warsaw Ghetto formed a resistance. We'll talk about that. Late 1943, death camps are starting to close. Hallelujah. May 14th to July 8th, 440,000 Hungarian Jews are sent to Auschwitz. Auschwitz is the worst uh, concentration camp. October 30th, 1944, the gas chambers are finally used for the last time at Auschwitz. January 27th, 1945, Remember, the war is pretty much ending at that point, and um, it's also the year that Hitler commits suicide. Many remaining camps were closed and evidence of their existence destroyed. Those who survived the camps were taken on forced, forced death marches. As you know, in 1945, Hitler committed suicide and the war ends soon after. And then November 20th, 1945, any surviving Nazis were put on trial to be guilty of what they did. So some images here for you. Um, just be careful if you do go out exploring on your own, the images can be very upsetting. I chose ones that I thought were safe for you. Um, in the top right, we have, or sorry, top left, we have Adolf Hitler and the Nazi symbol. Um, that is called a swastika, and it is a symbol of hate. Um, if used in the sense of the Holocaust and what happened, um, it's pretty much illegal to draw that at this point because it's a symbol of hate. Over on the next <clears throat> slide, we have the gas chambers. And then we have one of the death marches down below. Um, these people thought that they were going to go free. Um, and then they were shot from the back. Uh, you can imagine that once the um, once the gases gassing was complete, they'd have a lot of bodies to dispose of. And what you see in the top left is a furnace stove. Uh, many of the bodies were burned via the stove. Um, in the next picture, it shows you a train car, and you might be wondering why. And I, I assure you that the next picture below it is no one is deceased there, but they are struggling to stay alive. Um, when the Germans took over people and were sending them to concentration camps, they put the, them on these cattle cars, which is a train car with no windows, barely any oxygen because there's no windows, 
and they stuffed them to the gills. I mean, if you think we're stuffed during a lockdown, it would be like a hundred people in each of those train cars. So the folks coming out of that train car, uh, oh, and the train ride was days, if not a week long. Um, they're hungry. There's not been given food. They've had very little oxygen and they could be sick. So again, I assure you that those folks there are not passed away. Um, they're just, you know, finally getting to get out of those train cars. So I said we talk about concentration camps. They are large prison camps where people are sent by the Nazis to be held if they were lucky enough. Victims were worked to the bone and were often executed for no reason at all. Prisoners were executed either by gassing in the gas chambers, by gunshot, or by burning them in the stoves directly. Others died from mistreatment or starvation or disease. Families got separated from each other and they would never know if their family member would survive. Prisoners were transported to the camp in a cattle car. These cars had barely any oxygen and were stuffed with people. Many people did die on the way to the camp due to suffocation, starvation, or dehydration, and the trip was a long one. There are several types of camps, labor camps, POW, which is prisoner of war camps, where the inmates were tortured, hostage camps, and extermination camps. Once the Nazis exterminated a person, they just tossed the remains aside with no consideration. Other inmates often had to wheel their remains to a field and dump them on top of each other. And resistance. The resistance is important because it will be mentioned in our novel, Number the Stars by Lois Lowry. The resistance was a group of people who resisted the Germans' control. Some were Jewish and some were not. The resistance fighters worked hard to destroy and foil the Germans' plans. If they were caught, though, they were surely executed. All right, so I'm going to ask you to type up your um, what you knew before, what your thoughts and comments are, and what your questions are. Thanks, guys.